Hello there, welcome to today's edition of State of the Markets. Today is 7th of July 24 and in this video I am going to cover a very interesting topic which is why income tax should be abolished. Let's look at the complete agenda for this video. First we look at the state of the economy. When you make statements like you should abolish income tax, there should be a need in the economy for such a drastic step. We we'll look at the state of the economy, we will look at the signals that are telling us that something needs to be done about income tax. If not a total abolishment, then lowering of income tax is a necessity right now for the economy. Then we will cover outlook for Nifty. We will also look at outlook for Bitcoin. I know that Bitcoin has fallen drastically. We will cover the reasons behind that fall and see what we can expect in the future. Gold and silver have rallied as per our expectation in our last video and so have S&P 500, Dow and Nasdaq which have also posted very good gains as we were expecting. Let's, let's start with a quote. Government should collect taxes like a honeybee which sucks just the right amount of nectar from the flower without causing any harm. This is a quote by Chanakya and I believe this should be the guiding principle behind taxes. Let's first look at the state of the economy. In June, the unemployment rate hits 9.2%. That's an eight month high. The rural employment rate was at 9.3% and the urban unemployment rate was at 8.9%. Meanwhile, the savings rate is at 4.5% of GDP, which is a 40 year low while the household debt is at 40% of GDP which is high. We are also seeing persistent lower private consumption and high food inflation. This is the current state of the economy and it is clear that a huge section of the economy is struggling and there needs to be some proactive measure to address this. Lowering income tax what will happen if the government decides to lower the income tax? Let's first look at the savings and debt. Like we said, savings are at 40 years low. Household debt is at high level. So lowering income tax will put in more money in the hand of the people and that would help them either lower their debt or increase their household savings. So lowering income tax is good for addressing one of the problems we discussed, now the corporate income tax was already cut to 25% long time back and from that we saw that it resulted in a better balance sheet for the corporates. Similarly, lowering income tax for the individuals will result in higher household savings and lower debt. This will also boost private consumption which has been struggling for a while which is also one reason why a section of the economy is struggling leading to high unemployment. So if we want higher private consumption then lowering income tax is the solution to that problem. Now inflation has been a concern for the RBI but they have repeatedly said that it's the food inflation that they are worried about and you can be sure that lowering income tax would not result in much higher food inflation because this happens to be more of a supply side problem. So I expect inflation to remain relatively unaffected or maybe we will only see a mild increase in inflation because of lowering income tax. Lastly, because the consumption would be boosted, the savings would be boosted, the investments would be boosted, we are likely to see higher employment which will address one of the big problems being faced in both rural and urban areas. Now let's look at what happens if we abolish income tax. There will be two additional benefits of abolishing income tax. One of the biggest failure of all the governments in this country has been bringing back black money which is stashed abroad. Abolishing income tax and giving them the option to come back and invest in India will help in bringing back black money which is stashed abroad and which is also a stated goal of many political parties. Similarly, abolishing income tax can lead to revival of unorganized sector which was the biggest generator of jobs before demonetization and GST destroyed it. Lot of businesses run on very low margin and many of these businesses became unviable post demonetization 
and GST. Some of these companies and some of these businesses may be revived if income tax is abolished and it may lead to generation of employment opportunities for everyone. Now I understand this is a little controversial but once you abolish income tax then a lot of these businesses which were thriving or not paying income tax may be able to again function and then contribute to the economy. Now let's move to the next section. A disclaimer first. My name is Yashut Mani. I am an MFI registered mutual fund advisor and an educator. Please do your own research or consult a financial advisor for your individual investing needs. All views expressed here are general commentary and they are not meant to be investment advice. Let's start with Nifty. Nifty rallied from 23,500 to 24,005. In our last video, we had clearly mentioned that Nifty continues to be bullish and there is a long term pattern target of 25,274 that is pending for this index and we are likely headed that way. On 23rd of July, the finance minister will present the union budget and it is very likely that till that time, Nifty more or less continues to inch higher. The important support for Nifty is 23,350 while the important resistance is at 24,400 followed by 24,702. Next let's look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin has fallen by around 10% since we last spoke about it. There have been important developments. We have seen three big holders of Bitcoin selling simultaneously. That happens to be the US government, the German government and the Mt. Gox Bitcoin has also hit the market. These were a bunch of lost Bitcoins which are now returning to their owners and so there might be some selling due to them. Most interestingly, all three of them chose the same week to sell their Bitcoin and coincidentally, that week also happens to be a truncated week for the Bitcoin ETFs which are the major buyer of Bitcoin. Given that there was a major market holiday in US because of which the ETF demand was not available and given that three major entities chose to sell Bitcoin in that week itself, this should be enough to tell you that even after such effort, Bitcoin fell by only 10 to 15 percent. And according to me, this is very bullish for Bitcoin in the long run. In the short term though, we may still see some more selling. It's a possibility, but there is also high probability that the worst is behind us. Important support for Bitcoin is around 53,550 while the important resistance is around 60,430. The long term investors in Bitcoin can continue to accumulate and absorb all this selling. The active pattern target for Bitcoin is around 145,823. Next, let's look at gold. The gold rallied from 2326 to 2391. This is exactly as we discussed in our last video. We have clearly been bullish on gold and we continue to be bullish on gold over the medium term. The important support for gold is around 2256 while the important resistance is around 2450. The active pattern target for gold continues to be around 2660. Then we have the silver. Silver rallied by a lot. It rallied from 29.13 to 31.2. The important support for this commodity is around 28.5 while the important resistance happens to be 32.51. The active pattern target for silver is 38.79. It is very important to note and we have mentioned this in the previous videos as well that silver is going to outperform gold and by a big margin. So even if you want to accumulate gold, you may be better off buying silver because it is going to give you much better returns over the short term. And last week was just one example where silver outperformed gold by a big margin. Next we have the S&P 500. We were unequivocally bullish on S&P in our last video as well. Even though there are concerns with respect to the breadth of the market. However, from the price structure, it seems that the S&P 500 can continue to rally further. The important support for this index is around 5310 followed by 5174. 
The important resistance is around 5720, while the active pattern target is around 6066. Next, we have the Dow Jones. Dow Jones had a comparatively smaller rally that is compared to other US indices. It rallied to 39,375. The important support for Dow Jones happens to be around 38,431, while the important resistance is around 40,051. The active pattern targets for Dow Jones is around 44,000. Then we have the NASDAQ. NASDAQ posted a very good rally last week. It rallied by 6% and we have been bullish on NASDAQ as well as we discussed in the last video. The important support for NASDAQ happens to be 18,940 and important resistance is around 20,457. The active pattern targets for this index is around 22,167. With this, we come to the end of our video. I hope you liked it and if you did, please remember to share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for logging in.